Hello, this is Wendell Odom, and welcome to this version of Techie Topics. Today we're going to talk about what happens when a router learns multiple routes about overlapped VLSM subnets. Uh, but first, it's probably useful to review a few key points. First of all, when a routing protocol, one routing protocol, learns multiple routes to a single subnet, he picks the best route based on metric. And that's what most people understand. Then if you say, well, what if a single router learns multiple routes to the same subnet, but it's with different routing protocols? Well, that router has to think about the administrative distance, which is a number that tells the router which of those routing sources is more believable. I've got another Techie Topics video on administrative distance, and you can watch that. However, what happens when you learn routes for the same subnet ID, but the masks are different? That means they're actually different subnets, and you can even learn multiple routes for the same subnet ID with different masks, and technically they're different subnets. So that's what's happening in this video. For instance, here we've got router R1 on the left, and router R1 is going to learn with RIP a route to subnet 10.1.2.0 slash 25, and he's going to learn that from R2. At the same time, R1 is going to learn an OSPF route from router R3. And the subnet ID is going to be 10.1.2.0 as well. But this route has a slash 26 mask. So for as far as R1 is concerned, those are not the same route. Those are two different routes. So he won't compare those with metric. He won't compare those with administrative distance. And if that's all R1 learns, then R1 is going to put both routes in its routing table. And it'll have one for 10.1.2.0 slash 25 pointing to router 2. And it'll have this other route for 10.1.2.0 slash 26 that points over to R3. Now you guessed it, R4 advertises a route. We'll pick EIGRP in this case. And we'll make sure that subnet on the bottom right is 10.1.2.0 slash 27. Same subnet ID different subnet because it's got a different mask. So R1 will add this route to its routing table, 10.1.2.0 slash 27, and put R4 as the next top router on that route. Now, if you're already having heartburn about this, uh, take a second and step back. You don't want to do what's shown here on the page. You don't want to make a design mistake when subnetting and have subnets whose address ranges overlap each other. Right. But if it does happen and you want to understand what a router is going to do, in this case the router thinks of those as three separate subnets, three separate routes for three different subnets, and puts them all in the routing table. In fact, if you take this to a, the next degree, let's say router R1 is configured with an IP address of say 10.1.2.1 and we give R1 a mask of slash 24. Well, that's yet a fourth subnet whose subnet ID is 10.1.2.0, but with a different mask, so it's a different subnet. So R1 indeed adds a connected route for that subnet. And now R1, in this case, has four different routes that say subnet ID 10.1.2.0, but with different, uh, different outgoing interfaces and next top information. So that's what happens when a router has overlapping VLSM subnets. He thinks of each of them as different as long as either the subnet ID or mask is different. Now what gets really interesting in this case is what does R1 do when he's routing packets? And we'll leave that to another video. So hope you enjoyed today's Techie Topics, and I'll talk to you soon.